Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to this month's Shutter Magazine article. I'm Dustin Lucas and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Super Resolution Tool in Lightroom Classic. Uh, so for many of us, maybe we've already used the tool in Adobe uh, Camera Raw. It was uh, released a little bit earlier this year, um, but it's definitely a tool that's becoming um, more of my day-to-day -day workflow and especially for uh, with shooting with like a 24 megapixel camera, I don't care about megapixels anymore, right? I can enhance my images and get 200% um, resolution out of my uh, out of the super resolution tool. So just clicking on my image here, right? The image on the right is raw out of camera. This is one to one, 100%. The image on the left is my enhanced image, right? This is uh, with the super resolution tool, super quick and easy to use. We'll go through that a little bit more, but it's a right click enhance super resolution, enhance the image, it gives you estimated time, all that stuff. Um, it's a really awesome tool. Um, so it's not necessarily, you know, about using the right tool, not necessarily about using the best tool out there, but right, what's good enough? I think in this article, I really want to press that. What is good enough when you're resizing your image? 200%. Uh, um, is it Photoshop image size? Is it um, Topaz, Gigapixel? Um, on One has their own resizing software, um, Genuine Fractals, which was, it was based on before. Um, but I definitely want to kind of peer into the Topaz tool since it has an AI feature, uh, which I think is pretty cool um, with sharpening and noise reduction to kind of see how it compares side by side uh, with super resolution. I think you're going to be pretty, pretty surprised how good the super resolution tool matches up against it. And of course it's included, right? All these things are included as long as you're an Adobe subscription base user. Um, it's all included in Lightroom and of course Photoshop. So let's dive into how to enhance those details. All right, so how to enhance the details um, and add super resolution to our image, right? It's pretty simple. Go in develop mode, right click on the image, click on enhance, and you immediately get the enhanced uh, preview um, dialog box here. So right, so as it's gonna load our image on the left here, I'll be honest with you, the preview is garbage. Um, it doesn't look good and definitely doesn't do the details justice. Um, but what you can do is, right, we're in kind of a non-useful part of the image. You can click on, once our uh, loading screen comes back, the magnifying glass to go out, and then you can click on the face. Um, but as far as what I'm seeing here and just how pixelated it is and grainy, I mean, this doesn't do anything for me, <laughs> right? Um, so you definitely want to make sure have super resolution checked, right? Otherwise, it's just going to have the raw details. We want to make sure to have that checked. Leave the rest of it alone. I'm going to uncheck create a stack. I don't care about that. And it's going to give me an estimated time of 35 seconds, right? Um, just to give you a heads up, this is quite a bit faster than the Topaz tool. Um, which makes you render your files out. So I definitely want to kind of give some pros and cons to both. Um, I definitely don't want to give all the effort and praise to Adobe, but um, that's just something that I that was right out the gate. And by the way, when we enhance this image, we're going to get a DNG file. Um, so many of you that work in Lightroom or Adobe, DNG files are raw. It's a raw file. So it hasn't rasterized your image. It hasn't assigned a color space to it, right? We still have raw data. So to be able to use super resolution and get a DNG to have raw data, I feel like is a very big, um, you know, it's a very big win in the, in, the, uh, in the plus column for super resolution tool. So once it creates this DNG file, right, it's going to add enhance to the name of it so we know what type of file it is. And I've already done this before, right? So I already have my enhanced DNG previously. When I go here and I click in, you can see how far in, and also you can see what our dimensions have gone to, right? So of course this pixelation here is not how the image looks overall, but it's still loading. There we go, a little bit smoother. Um, so give you an idea, right? Here are our dimensions right out the gate. Um, so that's as simple as it is. And so we already have our enhanced image here. And now we're ready to jump into Photoshop to compare the image resize option. All right, so now we need to take our image and open it up into Photoshop to use the image size tool. So we can right click, choose edit in, and go right into Photoshop from Lightroom. 
Now once our image opens up, what we need to do is we need to make sure we hold Option, Command, and hit the I key. That takes us right into image size. Now, what I'd like to do is double the resolution. So a quick way to do that is to put an asterisk and put a two behind that, and that immediately takes our image up to 200%. So looking at the image at 100%, right, doesn't look too bad. I keep all the preserve detail enlargement. That's using my detail, um, my default. Um, I don't use bicubic smoother. Um, I feel like that goes a little bit softer. And the Preserve Details 2.0. No, not really seeing too much of a difference. So just kind of using this standard enlargement I think is fine. Reduce Noise at 15% works just fine. And we're ready to open this image up into Photoshop. Now what we'll do is we'll open up our Enhanced Super Resolution DNG file and we'll compare them side by side just using the resize tools for both programs. So I'm gonna jump back into Lightroom Classic. That enhanced DNG, we'll do right click, edit in Photoshop, and we'll get this file to show up as well. Now while we're waiting here, Something to keep in mind when you're using the super resolution tool as well as using you know, Topaz, uh, Gigapixel AI, or any of these tools, you have to be thinking about, um, you know, most of us have professional cameras. You usually don't have an issue scaling your image up. Um, it usually doesn't break up, right? Uh, most of these tools kind of become more uh, useful when you're enlarging a smaller image that you start with to something a little bit larger. Uh, so at least with this practical um, application of using an out-of-camera raw file with some edits and then enhancing that, I just kind of wanted to see how far away those details can get, right? Because my subjects are pretty far away here. So I think it's important when we're doubling that resolution, if we wanted to pull an 8x10 out from here, what that's going to look like one-to-one. -one. So I'm going to pull this image out here and just kind of move these about a little bit so that way we can kind of compare side-by-side. I think that becomes a little more helpful. So as we kind of drag this over here, and we're going to do Command-1 to get to 100%, right? And we can drag that over there. We can also compare, oh, don't want to do that. I'm trying to do this without it losing the locking into the program here. Do the same thing. And we're going to drag this over. Just so we can see side by side. Now we could overlap them. That's perfectly fine. But let's get a little bit. Let's get some space here. Kind of pulled my image out. I want to do that again. All right. Let's make this simple. Right down the line. Okay. So in looking at the image, right, so our enhanced image is here on the right, and the resize image is on the left. Now, my f the first thing that I notice in this is how kind of defined and not so rigidly sharp the hair is. As you see here, this almost kind of looks like a soft image that was brought up with some sharpening, you know, to kind of fix some things. A huge difference is like, look at the Eddie Bauer logo here versus there. I mean, it's like, can't even see it. Um, it's pretty insane. Same way with the pocket stitching, just much more refined detail. I mean, overall, the resize tool obviously is a huge step out from the uh, Photoshop tool. So I think it's a, a no-brainer here that the super resolution tool wins. So let's jump into Topaz Gigapixel AI, which is probably what most of you kind of want to see a side-by-side -side comparison of which one's good enough, they're both good enough, which one's the best tool. Um, and if super resolution ends up being the better tool, well, you can save some money not having to buy another plugin, right? So let's jump into that. All right, so now that I've rasterized my image, 
um, as a TIFF file, as you can see here, the lower left hand corner. Um, I opened it up in the Gigapixel AI Topaz software already, so that way we don't have to wait for it to load. So you can see this before and after, right? Left is on um, before the AI processing, right is after. So I have the standard model turned on. It's at 2x, so it's going to scale the exact same way. Um, all those um, to show like a side-by-side -side comparison with the uh, super resolution tool. Now, if I want to turn on the AI model here, we'll go ahead and hit auto. We'll let this process. And I think this is where the this tool kind of stands out a little bit more, right? So it's going to go in and already kind of assess what's needed on the image. My opinion definitely looks really bad with the noise here. Um, this detail here doesn't really get any better, um, which is interesting as well. Um, but that's something, I don't know if that's going to be something that's going to come out of this preview a little bit better. I mean, I'm also on the trial, so there's going to be a watermark, which we just kind of have to look past. But these are those kind of things I want to see what's different. You know, the stitching and the detail, what the skin tones look like, the noise and all that stuff. So I think leaving this in the auto um, setting and standard, we'll go ahead and hit save image. And we'll just go ahead and hit save and let that run. And like I had mentioned, this process takes a little bit longer than the super resolution, but um, right, it's at 11%, just gonna kind of run through its course. So we will circle back into Lightroom to see the comparisons um, of all three softwares. All right, so here we are with the results. Uh, the image on the left, is a TIFF file. It is using the image size software in Photoshop. The image in the middle is our super resolution enhanced DNG file added with a little bit of sharpening and noise reduction so that way I could catch it up to the Topaz Gigapixel AI image here on the right. So from left to right, right, far left, Photoshop image size, I mean, this image is usable, but seeing the super resolution is definitely not the right route to resize your image. Of course, I would, um, if working on a you know raw file, or even if you have a JPEG, um, you can open that file up into Adobe Camera Raw and um, or Lightroom in this case, and enhance to get the super resolution. So right out the gate, I mean, I'm not happy with the image size option here. I mean, so far the Super resolution tool is the winner. Now, I'm not going to fully fault the Topaz Gigapixel image, and I would assume even with the trial based sample with their watermark, I'm not going to pay attention to the hair here because it's kind of useless. The watermark goes over right over top. But his hair and focusing on her skin, I mean, looking at the details here in the hair and how it just looks natural and not so stark. Um, and you know, really kind of overly sharpened, like you'd see with high pass. This here just looks like it's trying to, I don't know, it's trying to sharpen a soft image. It just looks odd to me. I will say the super resolution image that could probably use a little more noise reduction and maybe a little less sharpening overall. But the fact that this isn't even in focus and is like soft looking is just odd to me. Um, same way with the details in the hands. I mean, of course, I'd soften that, but with the jacket and all, I mean, it's just kind of like night and day between the, the details of this and the details of that. It's almost like medium format to full frame camera, you know, with the type of details that you're seeing. I mean, it's just kind of insane what's being pulled out of these raw files. Um, so, I mean, looking at them side by side, is the Topaz tool good enough? Of course, um, and probably would do... I don't have a comparison here, but probably do a pretty good job, I think, of images that are compressed or images that are super small to start with and scaling them up. And maybe that's what that tool is more used for, but shooting uh, shooting in RAW, using a RAW file out of camera to get an enhancement, I mean, the super resolution tool definitely, definitely looks better, um, in my opinion, right? I mean, I'm looking at clarity. I mean, I'm looking at, um, you know, color is... In a, an opinion um, for sure, but I mean, I had to rastur rasterize this image out, so I'm not really faulting Topaz too much on that, but I've been reading a lot and seeing a lot of comparisons online, and it basically says that super resolution is good enough, 
um, and but Topaz is the superior tool. Um, I haven't found that in my experience here just yet. Just want to report that back to you guys. But that kind of gets us where we are, right? Super resolution in Lightroom Classic, right? It's better than good enough. The speed um, and how fast it renders the image makes me very happy, much faster than the Topaz Gigapixel AI tool. Um, so that's helpful, especially with workflow. You can do multiple images at once with the super resolution tool. So if I want to select them in grid mode, I can enhance those and create super resolution DNG files, right? So getting back to raw images, we're still working on raw files in this raw processing program. That's what Lightroom is, right? So if I still want to do enhancements to my images in a raw processor, it's good to be working on a raw file, right? So having that DNG allows you to do that. Of course, with DNGs, that keeps you in the Adobe ecosystem for Lightroom Photoshop users. That's your wheelhouse. So, I mean, really the only um, upgrade that I would love to see with the super resolution tool would be an AI feature to automatically kind of scan the image, give me some sharpening and some noise reduction. I mean, it wasn't really done well on the Topaz Gigapixel AI software, but it would be interesting to start to see AI features come into things like super resolution for fixing sharpness, noise reduction, and things like that. Um, same for like chromatic aberration. Um, so I definitely recommend try it out. I promise you won't be sorry. Of course, if you are a Lightroom or Photoshop user, that tool is there. Try it out and see what you think. Um, you know, be careful if you're doubling your dimensions, doubling your resolution, and your computer's running slow because you're editing, right, <laughs> on a large file. Just some things to keep in mind. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this and tune in next month.